When I transitioned from being a lawyer to being an art person, um, I did it purely as a hobby. I didn't have like this idea that I'm going to be an art person. And so I basically did what I love to do. And it's like kind of a cliche, but cliches are, you know, they exist for a reason. <laughs> I'm Philippa Hughes. Um, I run the Pink Line Project. You know, I took a few art history classes in, in college because I was interested in it. But ultimately, I learned, I, like, I kind of learned on the job, so to speak. Um, I just did. I just went to art stuff. I went to lectures. I talked to art people. I read. One good thing about DC is it's not that big. It's not like if you were in New York or LA. It would have been a lot harder, I think, to make those connections. Honestly, within like a year, I pretty much had met every sort of person I needed to meet, so to speak. But I think what was important was I went deeper than that. Um, you know, you could figure out like who, who sort of the air quotes important people are. But I think what really made Pink Line Project successful is that I actually tried to meet the people who are not the obvious people, the ones who are really kind of doing the behind the scenes work and the ones who are the rising people. People don't always relate to each other in the same way if there's a thousand people or if there's 20 people, you know, so I, I, so I had this idea that I've got to do all different kinds of things because I want to reach people in all different ways. But those salon contras, and then also I was doing these things called glow sessions, which were more music, like house, um, house concerts. Um, the salons you know, were just conversations. They were like the most magical experiences because it was not just like-minded, it was like-minded people getting together, but in an intimate space. And those kind of conversations, those kind of concerts can happen obviously in a gallery or in a traditional space. But when it happens in somebody's living room and you're just hanging out over a glass of wine, and then you meet somebody that you would not have met them if you were in like seats in a traditional space. And it's just like, they've been the most, I think those are the most successful things that Pink Line Project has done. People don't realize that like, my real passion and dream in life is to be a writer. Like I love contemporary visual art but I like I want to be a writer and I want to like and I want to like influence people I want to like influence them for the better and change you know it sounds so hokey like I want to change the world yeah. but through my writing the whole reason why I quit my job in the first place was because I wanted to be a writer so I'm trying to write sort of a history like a memoir almost but it's mostly based on my my mother's side of the family and how they escaped from North Vietnam to South Vietnam and lost everything and then they had to leave South Vietnam to come here and then they lost everything again. So it's weird that I basically originally quit my job because I was going to be a writer and then that actually turned into Pink Line Project and I haven't been able to write because I'm so busy running a business. So yeah, so I think this little sort of existential crisis I had made me realize like, I need to go back to Thing that I wanted to do in the first place. A lot of times people ask me the same question and I tell them like just start, just start and then make little decisions along the way that lead you toward what you think is your goal but your path absolutely will not be the same path that I took and in fact it would be terrible for you to take my path because you're like a completely different person so I've had like completely different experiences. So I usually just tell people, don't do what I did. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes, but I learned from them. So it's sort of like, don't, just make your own mistakes.